everybody out there. You're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. You're in my corner, and I have a very special guest in the corner. Would you like to unveil your identity? Hey, everybody. This is Brian Beacock. How are you? We're doing good over here. How are you doing in your neck of the woods? It's, it's about 150 degrees, so it's really great. Well, I can understand that sediment living in the desert. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> and now... I wanted to start at the very beginning, uh, hopefully uh, maybe when you're in, in diapers or maybe just a little bit older, but we were curious uh, how you got bitten by the acting bug. Well, you know, my dad was a trumpet player. He actually started in the service, and then he he uh, continued to play in San Francisco, and he played with Ella Fitzgerald and Sammy Davis Jr., and, and he and, and his two brothers were... Uh, all musicians, so the music thing was always in my family, and when I was seven, you know, I took piano lessons and drums, and so kind of performing was a way of life in our family at a very young age. And then, I don't know, junior high, high school, the whole theater thing started, and once you start doing theater, then you're like, wow, I'm going to be a TV star and a movie star. So um, I guess it must have been, yeah, I was in college, I guess, and I booked um, Les Miserables, the musical, in San Francisco, the the second national tour. So I did that for about a year and a half, and that got me my union card, which you may or may not know, but as as actors to work professionally, it's really difficult to get into any of the unions, and yet uh, you can't really work professionally without having your union card. So... I got my Actors' Equity card, and that allowed me to get my SAG card, uh, which is for Screen Actors Guild, and I moved to L.A. thinking, oh, wow, you know, I, I was in Les Mis. Everyone's going to, you know, put me on their TV show. And they couldn't care less. I mean, when you go to Los Angeles, yeah, it's not possible. You go to Los Angeles and you've got theater credits. They're like, well, that's great, but have you been on the Cosby show? You know, um, which I hadn't. So... I kind of started at square one in Los Angeles and um, did a couple movies and some TV shows and student films, et cetera. Um, Got a job at Universal Studios Hollywood in the Beetlejuice Graveyard Rock and Review. (laughs) Very nice. A crazy musical. I I worked at Universal for about 15 years. Um, Doing that show, I did Spider-Man Rocks, which was a a musical stage version of Spider-Man before this one that went to New York and tanked, incidentally. (laughs) And uh, I was musical director for the Blues Brothers show, and it was a really great job. And while I was there, um, doing theater and and movies occasionally and stuff, a friend of mine, Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, who was uh, an actress as well and then starting to be a voiceover director, she had a job for a TV show called Digimon, which you may or may not know. And... um, there was a part of a, a lead role, a young boy named Takato. And so she brought me in, and I'd never done voiceovers before. She brought me in. She just said, here's what you do. Here's how you do it. And, and I auditioned, and about three months later, I booked that part. And that kind of started the entire you know, 12-year run of voiceovers. Um, so it, was, it really was, you know, who you know at the point. But I kind of knew my stuff, and, and I was right for the part. You know what I mean? That that really helped me. He was a 15-year-old boy, and that kind of was my voice type. And the rest, as they say, is unemployment history. <laughs> <laughs> well, Digimon, for a lot of the listeners out there, is sort of a uh, fan favorite just because it has a lot of nostalgia value. And you were actually on a season that a lot of people really like because it had a, a lot more drama in it. Agreed. I, I think that the, the season of with Takato um, is one of the best, uh, the well, m- most well-written shows I've ever done. It wasn't just about fighting. It wasn't just about you know the turning and, and you know did she did she mortifying or whatever they did. Um, you're right. It was about the relationships and it was funny and it was animated very well and the music was great. So it was a great jumping-off point for me. So I'm I'm really proud of that. And, you know, I just did a Comic-Con in, in London, and um, people still remember him. So it's really cool. It's really cool. And now I'm curious, did you have any trouble with anime since you have to match lip flaps? Was that hard for you? I mean, you're, you're from a musical background, so I would assume that would help. 
Yeah, you know, the, the musical background helps a lot of stuff. What it does help is when you need to do what's called, um, well, sometimes you need to record a line exactly as you recorded it before, but change a word out. So the speech pattern is essentially a musical pattern, and it's following your ear and stuff. So that really helps. Um, I've also done, what's it called, um, voice matching, where you have to sound like another actor. And again, having a musical background will, will help you with that. But the lip flaps, oh my gosh. At the time, I had no idea what that was. I hadn't done much uh, ADR for movies, where you, you know, essentially you match your own flaps if a plane flies over or you're recording outside or whatever. So it was new to me. So it was definitely a very, very steep learning curve. And for about the first six months when I was doing Digimon, they were still on tape. Pro Tools was just starting. So if you did something wrong, they couldn't edit it. They couldn't cut and paste. They couldn't slide it left or right. So you had to be dead on. So I was really happy when, <laughs> when Pro Tools came in and kind of helped me out. It's kind of hard to realize that that show came out back in, like, 2001, so now I yeah, feel old. Two, two, I know. You feel old. Good Lord. <laughs> yeah. 2000, 2001 is when it started, so things were definitely changing in, in that kind of uh, industry. And now I'm curious, with a theater background, since a lot of things in theater you kind of have to really uh, dramatize it, does that help yeah. in animation? It does. Well, it certainly depends on the kind of animation you're doing. Um, you know, I auditioned, uh, I auditioned for King of the Hill years ago. And it's a really, really tough audition because, you know, you've seen the TV show and the character voices are heightened, obviously, and they're pretty weird, but they're not cartoony. And so it was difficult to find, find that vibe. And clearly I didn't since I'm not on King of the Hill. But um, it just depends on the kind of show you're doing, you know. Um, you certainly don't have any inhibitions having been in theater. So if they say scream and cry and moan and yell, you know, you're ready to do it. Definitely. And now you've kind of seen um, animation and anime uh, be a big thing and then sort of uh, become a smaller thing. And video games are now, from from my opinion, uh, becoming the big thing in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, what Do you have an opinion on how animation has kind of fluctuated? Well, you know, animation, there's so many different worlds. There's original animation, which is Family Guy, Simpsons, blah, blah, blah. And that's Boy, that's a tough nut to crack as a, a fairly new actor to the industry. And although I've been doing it for 10 years, I'm pretty much anime. You know what I mean? I've done a couple of original animation um, shows. So that's one world, <clears throat> the high-paying superstar world. And then uh, anime is essentially my home, and I love that. But even that has kind of this. It hasn't disappeared, but it is disappearing from Los Angeles, and I think it might be cost in the economy, but a lot of the shows coming in from Japan or wherever, they're going to Canada or they're going to Texas or Arizona, um, right-to-work states or places where they're paying their actors considerably less to do the same work. So that's been a, a big shame. You know, I was on about eight series at the same time in one year a few years ago, and boy, that was awesome. And right now, I'm just doing a couple shows. And then, as you say, I'm doing video games, which pay great, but they're, in, you know, you're in and you're out, and then it's over. Um, and they're not as fun. You uh, typically, <laughs> typically with a voice, uh, a voiceover for a video game, you leave the session with just a bloody raw throat because you're doing all those fighting eff eff efforts, you know, and attacks and stuff. Oh, yeah, and reaction sounds. <laughs> I hate them. I hate them. And inevitably, I'll either get the hiccups or I'll feel like I have to throw up. It, it always happens. It always happens. So I'm not a fan of, of doing the video games. Hiccups is a new one. I've heard of people losing their voice, but I've never heard of people yelling so much that they get hiccups. <laughs> <laughs> it's really awful. And, you know, it depends on who you're recording with. If you're with your friends and you've done it before, you can let them know, and you're like, oh, my gosh, you guys, <laughs> I have to take a breath or I need, need some water. But if you're with brand new people and they've got, you know, the uh, head of the company on phone from Japan and stuff, you kind of have to hide it. 
And there's nothing worse than hiding the fact that you either have to throw up or have hiccups. It makes for a very stressful recording session. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) Well, hopefully for all the fans out there, none of you guys feel like throwing up now. But we're going to take a small (laughs) break just in case you need to. So keep it tuned to 91.8 The Fan. Everything you want and nothing you don't. You need to cry. Let's brainstorm. I could hit you over the head with a wrench. Or I could stab you in the gut with the knife. Knife wrench! Practical and safe. Are you tired of crappy ideas that don't work? So are we. So we invented 918 The Fan. 918 The Fan. Everything you want to hear, nothing you don't. Knife wrench! For kids. Hey everybody out there, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. I still have my special guest here, would you like to give him a sign of life? Hey everybody, Brian Beacock, still breathing. That, well, that's always a good thing, we we want you to keep breathing. <laughs> <laughs> now we were kind of uh, talking behind the scenes, you know, the, the awesome place where you guys don't get to hear us, <laughs> um, about uh, conventions and a few things like that, and I was wondering um, if you could talk a little bit about your experience going to a few. Yeah, um, not too long ago, I got to, a couple months ago, actually, I was invited to go to the MCM Expo in London. Um, and the cool thing about this one was I wasn't going for a specific show. I just got to go as, you know, Brian Beacock, the voiceover actor, which for me is really cool and unusual because, you know, it's funny. People see you a different way. You know, people watch the show and and they're fans of the show and stuff. But for me, you know, I'm just Brian Beacock, no big deal. So I get to go to this convention where I'm treated like a king. The people are so nice. The people in London are awesome. The fans are great. Everybody dresses up. There's cosplay everywhere, which I thought was really cool. And um, I just had a blast. People bringing up, uh, as I said before, all the the old um, Digimon DVDs and pictures and um, video games that I had forgotten I would even ever done, which is really fun. And um, it just kind of connects you to the people that are watching the show and thus keeping you employed. You know, we're so far removed from everyone without doing things like this, this radio interview or going to conventions. Otherwise, we never meet anyone. So I really loved that. And um, I guess about five years ago, I got to go to... Armageddon Expo, which is in the North Island of New Zealand, and see, I, I only go to the big, the big, uh, crazy conventions where I can actually fly internationally. Oh God, um, lucky! <laughs> right? I won't, I won't go to you know Fresno. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> Fresno people. Um, so I got to go to New Zealand for the first time, and that was really fun. And uh, stayed there for a couple days and did the convention. And then I just rented a car and drove all around New Zealand. On the left side of the road, incidentally, which was another one of my learning curves. Unfortunately, everyone survived, but that was really, really cool. Really cool. Oh, that sounds like a great experience. I mean, the farthest yeah. I've gone is New Hampshire, and I was amazed at the trees. They're not dead. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right? <laughs> but I, I love conventions because they're kind of like an adrenaline rush. I kind of compare them yeah. to going to Disneyland, and the fans are always so excited. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what I really noticed, too. Everyone is, for the most part, everyone is in a good mood. Everyone's there for the same reason. Um, I just found people to be really outgoing and kind and excited and sharing this, I guess it's an underground environment with as many people as I see. I don't know how underground it is, but it's kind of like Christmas and Halloween and, and everything all mixed into one. It was really fun, really fun. Well, I definitely think geekdom is becoming more mainstream, like it's cool to be a geek nowadays. <laughs> That's right. That's right. In fact, I'm trying to think, are there any TV shows out right now? There aren't any, right? There's no TV sh- sh- or sitcoms or anything about cosplay or the anime world or anything like that. I bet we're going to see that soon, maybe starting on the Internet and then coming to network. Well, there was something 
Uh, that I recall, I, I didn't watch it myself, but Tokyo Pop, which is now defunct, sadly, uh, they were they released a lot of manga like back in the day, like Sailor Moon and things like that. But they were doing like this reality show called like oh like World's Greatest Otaku or American's Greatest Otaku. And really? It, yeah, they they basically were in a big like tour bus and they went around and found families who liked to love anime, <laughs> and they filmed. Oh, I it. love that. That's funny. And, of course, we've got The Guild, which is the web series about kind of about the world, which is uh, on, on the Internet right now and probably will end up on TV. But Definitely. It's definitely expanding. So hopefully, uh, you know, you get invited to more conventions. Do you have any others uh, coming up or are you waiting for the phone to ring? Um, <laughs> I'm actually going to New Zealand again next year, which I'm very excited about. And... Um, I just went to the Los Angeles um, anime convention, which uh, I was going to represent the, the show uh, Durarara. Was it Anime Expo? Yes, I believe it was Anime Expo um, in Los Angeles at the Los Angeles Convention Center. Ah, Fourth of July weekend. That's definitely a big yeah. one, too. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. And that one, of course, I was going for the... Uh, spe- specifically for that TV show, which at the time was only playing on the Internet. And I didn't even know that it was on. Because, you know, I mean, I've I got a million things going on. I had no idea. No one told me. So they said, hey, Brian, you're going to come, and, you're, you know, you're going to be there to represent the show. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I think I better watch it. So I watched all the episodes and stuff before I showed up, so I knew what was going on. Oh, I'm glad, I'm glad you went to the effort to do that. Not a lot of voice actors have time, so I think the fans really appreciate when you guys actually sit down and watch the material yourself. Sadly, I've got lots of time. <laughs> <laughs> and now, are there any other projects that you're currently working on or that you have coming up besides Dura Ra that you want the fans to know about? Yeah, I'm actually, I, I, a couple years back, I started writing and producing my own stuff. It's, it's a great way to kind of have the creative outlet when the phone is not ringing from your, your agent, etc. So um, I wrote a show with my writing partner called uh, McCracken Live, M-C-C-R-A-C-K-E-N, Live. And it is a right now a web series online about a guy who finds himself through a series of events on a television show, a do-it-yourself home improvement show, dressed as a woman. Um, it's the only way that the network will allow the show to go on. And they also think that because it's a struggling work. They, they think that the only way the show will succeed is if, if this character, Carol Ann McCracken, is surrounded by a series of onset catastrophes that she doesn't know are coming. So it's kind of like Tootsie meets Home Improvement in the style of 30 Rock and uh, maybe a little bit of that old movie Soap Dish thrown in. So it's behind-the-scenes TV, crazy antics, a lot of fun. And you can find us at McCrackenLive.com. And um, I think there's also probably links to it from my website, which is uh, brianbeacock.com. So I'm really excited about that show. We just uh, hooked up with a big New York agent, pushing towards uh, some network TV, possibly a uh, um, Broadway musical is in the works as well. And um, we're actually, we've been invited to the Marseille Web Festival in Marseille, France next month to bring our web show there and premiere it in front of a bunch of... uh, uh, buyers, TV buyers in Europe. So it's been a really big, crazy couple of years for that show. I'm very happy to hear that. And for the anime fans out there, just because it's not anime, don't dismiss it. It actually looked really <laughs> funny. I'm, t- I'm going to give it a, like a seal of approval here. <laughs> awesome. Well, maybe we'll even do a McCracken Live cartoon. There you go. <laughs> well, I saw some some cute art. I think it was uh, actually in your email <laughs> of, of the character. Um, I thought that was pretty adorable, too. Yeah, we just had someone who did a um, kind of like a Hirschfeld, who did all the, the Broadway characters. He did a Hirschfeld-esque uh, caricature of the lead character, which was kind of fun. That's really cool. And is there anything else that you want the fans to know about? Like, do you do the social networking thing? Maybe they can stalk you nicely, guys. Uh, in a, in a nice stalk way. me. <laughs> yeah, I've, I'm, of course, on Facebook and Twitter. Um, at Brian Beacock, and then you can also see the show on Facebook at McCracken Live, and also on Twitter at McCracken Live, 
and there's going to be a lot of videos, a lot of information coming up. I'm going to do some some video foot, uh, coverage of Marseille um, as Brian, obviously, and um, I'm also going to head to Paris and do some stuff there, so that'll be coming up in October. Um, got a new web series, which is a kind of like a psychological thriller about a writer in Los Angeles, and that's going to be a three or four season arc uh, online, possibly shooting it as a feature, but that's only if we get funding, and that one's called Rewrite. So that'll be coming up as well. I believe the the script for that, or a portion of the script for that, was uh, available on your website. On my website, yeah. I mean that the script's not for the faint of heart. I think the 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 example we list is fine, but it's going to be definitely a a scary, bloody, yet satirical fun film. Well, I personally love that sort of thing, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Cool. And- and now I'm sort of curious, since we're nearing the end of our time here, if you'd be willing to participate in a 91.8 The Fan tradition. Absolutely. What do I have to eat? <laughs> well, we don't deliver any coffee to you virtually through the Internet, but <laughs> we we are curious if you'd be willing to do a radio bump for us. Absolutely. Let's do it. Awesome. Well, we, The only trick is, is that we do this live on air. So if you mess up, everybody kind of hears it. Okay, now my heart's racing. Why are you going to do it? <laughs> Basically, we ask if you'd be willing to say, my name is, you insert your name, I do this, you can insert characters, or just general, I'm a voice actor, whatever you feel comfortable there. And the most important part is, and you're tuned into 91.8 The Fan. Gotcha. He's writing it down. <laughs> of course, come on. I'm calling it nerd. <laughs> All right. So whenever you're ready. Do it. Hey, everyone. This is Brian Beacock. I'm a voiceover actor, and you are tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. Like, that wasn't hard at all. No mess-ups, no nothing. You pro. <laughs> <laughs> and is there anything else you'd like to tell the listeners out there? Um, just keep watching. Um, keep watching all anime, obviously, not just mine. And um, we just uh, appreciate it. We really appreciate it. We think you guys are great. And I also appreciate you guys doing this uh, this radio show. It means a lot. Oh, well, thank you. And it was a pleasure to have you on. You were a bundle of energy, and I love it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> cool. <laughs> For any of the people out there that missed any of this interview, don't fret. It'll be up on the website within the next few days. So keep it tuned to 91.8 The Fan. Everything you want and nothing you don't.